And uh, with that being said, I think we're gonna head down to the match right now. MTGO Masters, match number two, week number nine, season two. I am Young Dingo. Joining me is Canister. And Canister, what do you think about these opening hands? As we just spoke about, I would guess that Seth is going to aggressively mulligan this otherwise fairly keepable hand away, looking for something that's going to yield him a, a Trinisphere or a fast through the breach. And... What do you say about a turn two Fodnots here, backed up by relatively fast through the breach into Emrakul the Eon Storm? Yeah, that, I don't hate that hand at all. I think if you put back the Micro Spawn, it's got a pretty good shot of getting there potentially. I think that, I mean, Hain's hand is really fast. If he hits the right pieces here, he can win on turn two even. Go Ritual into Medallion, Manamorphose, and go from there, mayhaps. And even without that, just very importantly, Alexander is on the play. So he gets to deploy his Ruby Medallion before Fodnotsir gets summoned. So that's very, very important. The Eldrazi through the breach deck is not very good at dealing with artifacts that already resolved. Codlex Command, Codlex Return, all this dust, all of those interaction cards are useless against it. You only have to rely on a pair of Bosages and it's not the best. Yeah, I expect him just to probably deploy the medallion, play it safe, and not actually spend the ritual and try to go for the turn two. From Alexander's point of view, if your opponent starts on Temple, you're probably not that worried unless they go Ugin's Lab into Trinisphere. But I kind of just like playing the Ruby Medallion and passing, although he picked up a second ritual, so does that change things? Yeah, like he did tank on the second ritual for a little bit, but it does make sense to, to go for it, right? You go... Ritual, Monomorphos, or I guess the other way around. So you produce a hefty amount of mana and you see three extra cards. All right, what do we hit here? Land, land, land and land. land. Ooh, that's a All tough right, break so, for Alexander. Yeah, Alexander smartly kept his desperate ritual so, so that uh, it did not get spewed. And, you know, like, come on with Storm is, is not so bad, right? Like, it's if you fizzle it's typically not so bad oftentimes you you cast all of those impulse draw spells which just uh gonna let you cast the extra cards you can't cast right now on your next turn and you know you, you would need to get past those two scalding turns anyway so yeah not too bad gonna be to play a scalding turn here and probably fetch up a surveil i think that maybe both surveils are in hand and in play the two Alexander is tricks. running a triple commercial district list, so Ooh. he's going to be able to find yet another one, specifically gearing his decklist for this situation, I guess. Very smart. That's going to get a little bit more agency here, although this Through the Breach is coming down the next turn here after this Talisman's played and maybe an Ancient Stirrings too. Mm -hmm. Can Seth use Ancient Steerings to get anything great this turn? I guess a second Fault Notes here wouldn't be too bad. You would probably be happy casting that. Yeah, no Trinisphere. Because they don't have quite enough mana to go Ancient Steerings into the Trinisphere. But it looks like we got a Myco spawn. Maybe pick that one up here. Second Talisman is yeah. not super helpful. Doesn't seem to to matter at this point. I guess you have like you know your your next turn is scripted. You play through the breach into Emrakul. So the ancient Sphinx was just looking for a powerful play that can be done this turn, but doesn't seem like that is the case. So Seth is not going to steer off plan. So Alex, whether he knows it or not, he is on a on the on a clock. He has one turn to win. That's it. Yeah, he needs to top deck past in flames, I think is his best draw here. Could quickly find a pass in flames. And here it goes. Here we have a pass in flames with Pirate okay. Ritual. We have just yeah, enough mana to, to start casting rituals from the graveyard. So that should probably be it, honestly. Yeah, we go ritual, past in flames, and then ritual, ritual, rens resolve, rens resolve, and go from there. Metamorphose too. Wow, that was some pretty fortunate hits 
for Hayne after hitting the land land off the first Ren's Resolve. Things were looking grim, but the passing flames coming in clutch. Certainly the second Ren's Resolve made up for the first one being so disappointing. It was very anemic, but now it's paying dividends. Hit Ruby Medallion land, that's not a great Ren's Resolve. Let's see if maybe he wants to fire off this Manamorphose or a second Ritual now. Plays the land, gets the Wooded Foothills for probably a basic mountain. Gonna fire off another Ren's Resolve. We hit Ral and Reckless Impulse. So this Ral is going to flip into a Planeswalker and ult very quickly here. We only need to cast like maybe two more instants and sorceries. Do we have extra rituals in the graveyard with flashback? I think we do. There is a pirated ritual at the bottom of the graveyard and a metamorphose. So odds are that the Ral is going to eventually flip, right? You get so many tries and then it should be smooth, smooth sailing. Yeah, any flip now is just immediate ultimate, and that should win Alexander the game on the spot unless he gets very, very unlucky. Here we go. There's the Brawl ult. Eight cards enter the exile, cast up all for free as long as they're instants and sorceries. And that looks like a lot of castable cards there. I see a wish, I see a bunch of Ren's resolves, and I think we're going into game two with Alexander up a game already. Seth packs it in. Now, there's this one very interesting sideboard card for Alexander that's multiple red and green pips, and I'm not sure I'm super familiar with that art. It's Kogla and Yidaro. Oh. A, an interesting option, a, a card I wouldn't have expected to see. Certainly, cert it's certainly a way to deal with uh, Trinisphere. It has a four mana... Activated ability that you can activate from your hand, which destroys targets, artifact, or enchantment, and lets you draw a card. I'm not exactly sure why Alex chose to go with Kogla and Idaro. Like, it's, it's not particularly cheap or efficient or synergistic with Ruby Medallion. Because or... <laughs> if you wish for it, you can't use the channel ability from hands, so you got to cast it for its full price, huh? Yeah. That's interesting. I guess maybe uh, he felt like the two nature's claims were good enough to wish for, so he just wanted like an additional modal removal spell in hand or threat out of the wish board. In case he needs to play a fair game, maybe he's locked down by like a damping sphere. He just goes like, make a bunch of mana, wish, Kogla, just in some niche scenario. Pretty interesting. Sure. On Seth's side, Seth is moving his cards and uh, boarded out the creature removal. That's not so good, I guess. Yeah, the Kozilek's it's return in the Owl's Dust. Of the full place of Trini Sphere. Unfortunately, Seth's on the play, so this Gemstone Cavern is not going to be super helpful. Always feels extremely bad. Even if your hand is just otherwise great, you look at this Gemstone Cavern and you're on the play and it just feel like you you wasted so much value. Yeah, I think this might be a mulligan for Seth. What do you think? Is do you think this through the reach is like fast enough? Uh well, currently we're looking at turn none as we don't have a red source, so it's certainly a bit sketchy. Yeah, even if we did have the red sources turn four currently. There's only eleven red sources and Seth's Deck also ancient seedings to find them. I guess sewing microspawn can can find them. It's a bit sketchy for sure. Not in love with the hand, but Seth is famously known for his wide key branch in general. Yeah, the uh, Besage off the top is gonna be pretty helpful because we can now take out the Ruby Medallion if we see fit, or we could just cast the Thought Nuts here and try to get a little bit of hand disruption in here. Mm hmm. It does make sense. Although I always feel very bad when I. Also, add you a Ruby Medallion on turn two. You're kind of just giving your opponent the mana up, anyways, right? Yeah, but I think over time the Ruby Medallion discounts a lot more than one mana during the pop off turns. Yeah, yeah, of of course, of course. But like you know, giving your opponent a land is also potentially Big giving them more than than one mana, right? Over the course of the game, so especially if it's a commercial district, then you know they get to surveil too, they get a little bit of extra value on top of that. Yeah, if they find a ritual, that's even more mana from their land, which produces mana. That's kind of sick. 
Maybe the second thought on Sue here. Do you think we deploy one of those? 100%, right? Yeah. I mean, as soon as you're not going to keep a Poseidon up for a Ruby Medallion that's not in play yet, you probably would rather well, not see it. Yeah, I was a little Alex. surprised that uh, Alex ended up going with the yeah. Impulse instead of the Medallion. Alex kind of punished for keeping his Medallion in hand, so yeah, I guess he wanted to protect it from Poseidon, exactly? Because that's the only card that kills it and says that stack, and there is more fault not serious, and it seems like a worse scenario overall. So, pretty interesting choice. On yeah, Alex's... I don't think it's as you mentioned earlier, the Eldrazi deck doesn't have a ton of ways to destroy on board artifacts. But I think it was probably safer on the table than in his hand. Oh, and that's a red source. That's it. That's just 19 damage. So, right on time. Yep, 15 plus 4, that'll get there. Fifth, fifth mana, red source, with Emrakul, the Eon Storm, onto the battlefield, attack for 19, and finish the game immediately. Do you think that game ends up going differently if Hain deploys that Mox on turn 2? Or sorry, not the Mox, the uh, Medallion. Medallion. His hand was really big, right? So the Fodnot Seer would not really necessarily be able to put that big of a dent into it, so perhaps we would see either Seth feeling compelled to Boseju the medallion, which I guess would result in a game that goes the same way, most likely, or playing a Fodna C regardless and then perhaps getting punished for that and losing so. Yeah, because the, the Thought Dancer does not poke a hole in that hand, so potentially just loses if he goes with the Thought Dancer line, so he'd probably have to mm -hmm. be pressing the Boseju, and I'm not sure that's good enough. That's probably fine though. By the way, this opening hand for Seth is another fast thought nods here, and we've seen it like work out pretty well. These turn two thought nods here have been good enough. You also get to look for a turn two Trini Sphere with, with your Devourer, so makes sense to keep it. Yeah, let's see what the Devourer finds here. The turn two Trinisphere is definitely a better play than the Thought Nuts here again in this matchup, I think. Certainly on the draw too. Because Alex Round is three. gonna most likely deploy a medallion or a Rael on his turn two, so he's already gonna have a cost redu reducer in place, so he can fold on it away. This is a pretty good hand from Hain, though. I could potentially kill on turn three if we find the right pieces off of this Reckless Impulse. Mm -hmm. It's pretty strong. We're just looking for a ritual, basically. Yeah, ritual, and then like maybe a Manamorphose would do wonders here. A ritual, and then just more rituals, ideally. Is that going to think? On the devourer. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't get to see the selection, but you know, we can guess that there is no Trini Sphere there, right? Because then he would have probably snapped it off. They pick something. Looks like a second Thought Not Seer. Mm hmm. Okay. So he's just gonna Thought Not Seer twice in a row. That's gonna be his plan for the game. So certainly something worth. Uh, Thinking through before you, you commit to that, like Photon Seer on the draw, as we just, just mentioned. The cost reducer is already going to be in play, so it's going to be a bit scary, but nabbing this Pass and Flames might be very good. Notably, Thought Seer does exile, so if Seth decides to take the Past in Flames, then we're not going to see the flashback of the Past in Flames come up at all until we find another copy of it. Stearings is potentially a big draw. It might find a Trini Sphere. We've looked through so many cards already, and we get to look at five deeper, so... And it does? Also at... Yep. Now, big decision for Seth here. Do you think that there's an abrade on the side of Alexander, or do you just jam the transfer? I think you'll, you just jam it. Even if there's a an abrade, there also needs to be a land. It, it has to happen immediately. I would be scared that the Thought Not Seer alone is not enough to stop my opponent from combo comboing off. And the Trini Sphere is at least assuredly buying you a turn. 
Yeah, I like the Trinity while, as well because while it requires a pretty specific combination of cards from Alex to answer. Yeah, like you mentioned, it's gonna take the a braid and the land and Alexander's entire turn. I think it's way Seth safer. Disagrees. Oh, interesting. Obviously, we have inf more information than the players do, so it's interesting to see their decisions in the dark. So now we have two options. I guess you take Impulse. You take Ral. Okay. Hmm. This is kind of risky because if Alexander gets the Impulse into any rituals, it might just be lights out for Seth. Mm-hmm. The first Impulse is not so good, I guess. Second one found land ritual. So we crack this, we get a mountain, we ritual up to three, reckless impulse back down to two. We find another ritual, we can pass in flames, do it all over again. We did. Here we go. That's it. Wow. That should be the game. It should be the game indeed. Three mana passed in flames. One mana ritual, one mana ritual. Really interesting to see, you know, the players' decisions and how this game unravels. Storm games often are pretty intense and, like, while short, they tend to be pretty dense with decisions that have high level of conse consequences. So, uh, you know, you, you don't necessarily always know which uh, option you pick is going to be the best, but of course. Like in Magic in general, you're trying to make an educated guess. And I feel like against Storm, it's often exacerbated and you, you now, feel it more than in general. I agree completely. And we see this like stressful decision right now because if this glimpse whiffs, Alexander will have fizzled. That's true. I guess we're considering casting the Ruby Medallion before that. I think so, and he does because it's going to reduce the glimpse down to one, and then we can still cast any rituals, and there's no more rituals, Canister. Holy guacamole, so I spoke too soon. That was not it. That was certainly a thing, but it was not it. So now we have the decision between do we Ren's Resolve, try to set it for next turn, and then just hold the abrade. And... Oh no, this abrade's going to the graveyard because it's a glimpse, not a resolve. Or an impulse. That and then we found lands. Oh. Yeah, Bray's going to the graveyard, which is crucial because the Trinosphere is still in Seth's hand. All right. Well, the Trinosphere is going to be pretty, pretty good right now. I think this Trinosphere might be backbreaking even for Alexander. We do have those. Well, two... Is it going to be? Spawns. We cast a three mana pass and flames and a three mana braid. Then you cast a braid. You you're honestly fine, right? He does need the sixth mana source, right? Because the pass and flames will be three, and the braid's gonna be three. Well, I see four fetches exiled, ready to be played. Oh, so right, 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 right. Can right. From you can pick and choose from among those. I was staring at the commercial district in hand, like, hmm, needs that to be on tap. No, I forgot that. He can definitely play lands off of the Reckless Impulse, so any of the four fetches will do. Yeah, certainly you, like, when you play Storm, you, like, exile off those fetch lands with your Impulse draw effects. You start filtering them out as unplayable blanks, but they can be quite useful in spots like this. Yeah, and I think we have to play one of the fetches from Exile, go fetch, past in flames, and braid the Trinosphere and just try to survive for another turn. Because if we can survive, and uh, I think we got it, right? The next turn? Well, we got something. I don't know if we got it. I don't want to make the same mistake again during the same game, but we certainly can... Alex can certainly cast... His other passing flames into a ritual into glimpse and resolve. So likely he's gonna find something. Oh, notably, he wants he should play the ritual this turn from exile as well because it's mana neutral, three mana for three mana, and it puts it in the graveyard for future passing flames. 
that's actually really smart and i almost missed that line of play so it was it's very good that you caught it let's see if alex uh is going to make full use of his ritual if he chooses to go the line we described i'm not sure he's got many other choices this turn unfortunately mm -hmm. and then he also has to dodge breach off the top plus the thought nuts you're taking the past and flames is going to make the past and flames that he's casting this turn cost one more the following turn That is unfortunately all true, but yeah, see so we cast the ritual here. Nope, go straight for the abraid. So we got a little bit of lost value on this ritual. Ula mock the defiler. We're not really close towards casting that. And Alex is at a pretty nice life to talk to. 13 life means that he can take two hits from those Fortnite seers and still live. Yeah, it's very convenient. Life total can't really fetch, though, because then he'll go down to 12, and then that's a two-turn clock with the two Thought Not series. Eight damage coming across next turn. Mm hmm So not much of a decision here. Thought Not series is going to exile the Passion Flames. The one currently in the graveyard costs three mana. Okay, we top deck the Mountain. So even if we go off and fizzle this turn, we'll still survive an entire turn cycle from these thought. Yeah, series. And, and there is still another pasts and flames in the graveyard, so not much is lost. You could also even buy even more time by just casting glimpse and letting your cards go to the graveyard and make a lot of sci making Ooh. a lot of science. Yeah, that's smart. Because there's a second or pass and flames in there, so this is also just like fueling the next pass and flames on top of that. Mm -hmm. How do you buy a glimpse into glimpse and then just letting all the cards go to the graveyard? You could do that, but I feel that casting a ritual is just a little bit too good, and you don't actually need the spawns, most likely, and there is a decent chance you you can win this turn. Oh, with the second man Morphos. Yeah. That's looking pretty likely. There's a Wish Exiled that costs just one red mana, so... Assuredly, there is something powerful that Alex can grab right now. Like, there's a good chance that Seth wouldn't be able to beat a Cogline either, or if, if Alex would decide to wish for that, but unfortunately, his Manamorphosis didn't produce green green. That's so sad. It would have been so cool to see a Cogla guest appearance. You had to have played that in the Amulet sideboard at one point, right? Many did. I think I actually avoided putting that card into my deck successfully but i do own a foil one somewhere in my in my amulet in my box of amulet cards so hit the one of random red and green six mana cards yeah <laughs> along with roxanne i think roxanne it's was pretty good wild. roxanne was good for it yeah and we Let's see alexander take it from mm -hmm. seth pretty convincingly got a Pretty good pop-off.